Welcome back to another episode of Blake's Take. Hope you're having a good one today. We're going to dive right in as we say Happy New Year with today marking the first day of the NFL New League year. And boy, did we start with a splash. We will start with a historic deal in Trent Williams and San Francisco 49ers agreeing upon a six-year $138.06 million deal that will make him the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history. The deal has $55.1 million guaranteed as well as $30.1 million signing bonus. Williams, widely considered the best available free agent this offseason, discussed potential deals this week with the Kansas City Chiefs and the Chicago Bears. However, the Chiefs signed Joe Thune and the Bears signed German Ifita, allowing Brown and the Niners to agree upon and work out this historic deal. Williams finished last season with the fourth best pass block win rate at 93.6% among defense offensive tackles. Keeping Williams was the primary concern for the 49ers this offseason. If they lost him, their plans for free agency and the draft would have changed drastically. But no need to worry, the Niners have their blindside protector in place for six more years and just are going to have a great offensive weapon there protecting Jimmy G if he stays. So great deal done for the Niners, and I'm also happy for Brown. He is an elite level tackle, proving to himself over the past few years that he is an elite offensive tackle and a key part of offensive lines, and he's going to protect you at all costs. So that blind side is safe for you in San Francisco for six more years. Congratulations to Brown and the 49ers organization as they move forward and can be safe and have at be at ease as they continue to go on to free agency and their plans for the draft. In the pursuit of obtaining Russell Wilson, the Chicago Bears and quarterback Andy Dalton have agreed upon a one-year deal worth $10 million with a chance for the quarterback to earn another $3 million in incentives. Chicago made a very, very aggressive pursuit of Russell Wilson, but Seattle told the Bears they were not considering trades at this time. Wilson has a no-trade clause that he would have to waive to be traded. The Seahawks would also have to take a $39 million cap hit in dead money if they traded Wilson before the June 1st deadline, which is definitely something the Seahawks organization doesn't need at this time. In nine starts, Dalton had a 4-5 and five record, throwing for 2,170 yards, as well as 14 touchdowns with eight interceptions. So we shall see who gets the starting job in the Windy City. Either the former Super Bowl MVP in Nick Foles or this veteran looking to completely reshape his career uh, after he had his long career in Cincinnati, had this little stint with the Cowboys, and see if this Chicago could be a new beginning for him. So we'll see how it turns out for Andy Dalton. Unfortunately, that Chicago couldn't acquire Russell Wilson. That's a letdown for them quarterback-wise. But we'll see if this quarterback situation and if Andy Dalton can make a difference or not. On to Jacksonville where Coach Urban Meyer and the Jags front office are making big moves early in free agency. Kicking off the day with the signing of former Seattle Seahawk Shaquille Griffin on a three-year deal worth up to $44.5 million with $29 million guaranteed. Griffin will pair with the 2020 first round pick in C.J. Henderson to give the Jaguars two young corners they can build their secondary around. Griffin will help the Jags secondary, who has struggled in man-to-man coverage, with the fourth highest rate in the league last season, allowing a league-high 8.7 yards per attempt. Griffin has six interceptions in his four seasons in the NFL, including a career-best three in 12 games last year in 2020. So he is at the peak of his career right now, just getting better and better. This is a great pickup for the Jags, hoping to rebuild their once elite secondary that was led by star Jalen Ramsey. So this is a great pickup for them. Hopefully this secondary can shut down that man-to-man uh, stat and try and get more up and physical with their uh, wide receivers. And I think this addition of Shaquille Griffin will really help them accomplish that and really transform their secondary to the next level, helping to get more wins and a better defense overall. 
Now to finish off the NFL free agency segment, well, we will talk about another big move by the Patriots, of course, with the signing of former Los Angeles Chargers standout tight end Hunter Henry to a three-year, $37.5 million a year deal, including $25 million guaranteed. Henry had a career-best 60 receptions for 613 yards last season with four touchdowns for the Chargers as he joins his new teammate in Juno Smith and Nelson Aguilar in New England among the receiver targets they have picked up in free agency. Bill Belichick has long favored a two-tight end approach, having used first-round picks at the position in 2002 with Daniel Graham and 2004 in Benjamin Watson, and later pairing Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez together in his second date as the Patriots coast, going on to win several Super Bowls with those tight ends. Now we will have to see if Henry and Smith, to help address that position, that have been somewhat of a non-factor since Gronkowski's departure in 2018. This is another great pickup for the Patriots, who have been going all out in free agency, and this is just an all-around wild free agency across the NFL with big names and big contracts flying around this offseason. It's going to be a heck of a new year and a heck of a year in the NFL. I look forward to more deals to come. As far as NBA, we are going to start with a Blazers with the addition of CJ McCollum. They come back and are looking to get their first win with him in two months against the Pelicans. And this one was a close battle that went down to the wire. New Orleans stretched the lead to as many as 16 points in the opening half before going into the break up 64-50 to with Williamson and Ingram combining for 30 points of the Pelicans' first half points while battling slightly hand while Lillard battled with slight hand pain throughout the half. The Pelicans then dominated their way through the third and even into the early fourth with Zion getting fed in the paint while Brandon Ingram hitting some nice threes from outside while Lonzo dished out a career-high 17 assists to his teammates. Great ball movement, and it was looking good for the Pelicans, looking they were going to carry this out through the fourth. But by the six-minute mark, the Pelicans weren't all hoop-de-hoop and uh, all goalable because it was still 117-100 with six minutes to go. And when the ball is in Damian Lillard's hands, you have to have some fear in your heart. Dame went on to lead the Blazers on a 16-0 run with several key shots from beyond the arc, putting the Blazers just down one with five seconds to go, where the Pelicans would have a failed inbound play that gave the Blazers the ball just in time. Dame got the ball and drove right, pulled up, and got fouled, sending this one into over into the sending him to the line because he got fouled, in which he sunk both free throws to add to his perfect 18 for 18 performance from the line and overall his 50 point total and this was Dame's 12th 50 point game of his career allowing him to tie LeBron for 7th most all time. Dame knew what time it was at the end and led the Blazers to an incredible comeback victory over the Pelicans. This was just an incredible victory for them. It was amazing to watch that comeback and it just shows that Dame is never going to give up despite the being down 17 with just six minutes left. He can do anything, folks. He's a special one. On to Knicks versus Sixers, where we where the Knicks were looking to snap their 13-game losing streak to the Sixers as of the loss of Joel Embiid. The Knicks led to the led just 21 to 20 after the first quarter, quarter filled with missed shots and an ugly start to the game from both sides. Then in the second, RJ Barrett picked up the slack for the Knicks, getting in the lane alongside Julius Randle, getting others involved to go up eight at the half. Philly then came out hot in the third quarter, going on an 8-0 run to shorten the lead to four after threes by Tobias Harris and Seth Curry. The Sixers bench then rallied into the fourth with Matisse Thibault and Furkan Korkmaz bearing consecutive threes that brought the, brought the Sixers within four once again, followed by two consecutive baskets from Ben Simmons to make it 91-87 to 87 with around five minutes to go. To, however, Tobias Harris got a bucket in the paint that extended the Sixers' lead with just under a minute to go. Now down to the 15 second mark where the Sixers once again have a chance where the Knicks once again had a chance to tie with an Emmanuel quick jumper 
quickly jumper that bounced a around the rim and rebounded by Randall, who dished it out to Reggie Bullock, who stepped out of bounds, though. And that was the end for the Knicks that night. Simmons, Curry, Harris, and the entire Sixers bench all worked with each other to pull out the victory and continue their mentally, mentality despite the loss of Embiid, continuing to win on their win streak. And unfortunately, the Knicks get another close loss at the buzzer. They just you got to try and pull out these wins at the end and really sh shut down and tower down at the, at, in the fourth quarter because they did not have a good fourth quarter or first quarter performance. So they need to get out to early leads and finish those leads at the end. So that's the big thing for the New York Knicks, uh, who once again fall to the 70 76ers for the 13th consecutive time. As far as MLB, off of this NBA segment, we segue into some MLB slash NBA news with the LeBron James joining Fenway Sports Group as a partner, giving him an ownership stake in subsidiaries, including one Boston Red Sox, and we already know he is part of the Liverpool Football Club. He has a 2% stake in that. FSG is among the largest sports ownership entities in the world, and James' involvement will only increase it to reach as FSG was bought Liverpool in 2010 for $493 million, and of course, James joined in with his investment of $6.5 million. FSG turned down a $2.6 billion bid for the team in August of 2018, leaving James with tens of millions of dollars in profit off of his initial investment. Great investment for him there. And now this new ownership in the Boston Red Sox is really just another step in the already clear path that LeBron is going to be an NBA franchise owner someday. He is making the moves early in his career, making investments in ownership groups, and he is just going to establishing these partners so that because no matter how rich LeBron is, he no matter how much he has made in his NBA career, it's always going to help to have partners to help him get into an NBA franchise owner position. And I truly believe that's going to happen for LeBron because he, he's even stated that he's not going to walk away from just from basketball entirely after he retires. So it's going to be great to see LeBron own an NBA team. That is exciting, and this is a huge step forward for him. As far as local sports, the Flumith girls soccer team played only 49 minutes yesterday because they forced the Marcy rule after scoring nine goals to take an eight-point lead. Senior Olivia Pittman had a big day with a hat trick and an assist, while senior mate Braden McNeely and Kaylee Sadoff also had multiple goals with two each. Then freshman Bailey Bell also added two assists, and junior Kay Bacho also had a goal. Really dominating victory for the Warriors, who are now 3-1, and one, looking to dominate their way through the rest of the Oregon West Conference. They're looking good. I'll report on the boys next time they have a game. They've been kind of struggling lately, but hopefully this girls' soccer team, they always be competitive, and I look forward to their next game. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of Blake's Take. Hope you enjoyed all the NFL wild free agency news and the news of LeBron hopefully joining a with him owning part stake in the Boston Red Sox, advancing his career as an NBA owner and just franchise owner in general. Hope you enjoyed all of that. You can catch me on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and or YouTube. You can. I would really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, the like button. It would help reach other people with these incredible local and national sports from the Willamette Valley and beyond. Hope you all have a, had a great one today, and I hope you all have a great one tomorrow because I will see you all in the next one.